Hello and welcome to another Kerbal Space Program video and today I am going to be attempting the Mun Landing Challenge with a low mass SSTO to orbit space plane and without further ado let's get on with the video. So first off I'm gonna delete the default cube. Um, let's just choose some parts to build our space plane. Uh, we need a cockpit. First need a cockpit. Um, fuel tank, maybe some ore in case we have to mine on the side of the... And there we go, a slow mass SSTO to orbit space plane. But of course we need some scientific experiments to stick on here such as... Um... Craw! It's a craw. Craw. And now we have all of our equipment ready. Just, just check our staging. To you know, there's never enough bird. We can always add more bird. And of course, we're gonna be giving this thing a name. The EFX 13, because this is the 13th SSTO to space plane orbit I've ever built. And of course uh, this version of KSP has um, additional wildlife that I can take a look at over here. Actually first get out of the cockpit and adore these little creatures we have. Take a look at these little creatures we got over here. What if we just get on one of these creatures. Look at Je look at Jeb. Jeb, you're back. I thought you were gone. How do you get back here? Let's take a look at what happens. And we should uh, always have to be uh, extremely careful around such creatures to be able to. These creatures are extremely ex extremely dangerous to be able. These creatures are these creatures are extremely da extremely dangerous. I'd say you always have to be very careful that you're not watched by a bunch of these little creatures, as they you know. We got the ground effect mod. Should install the ground effect mod. We do have a lot of drag, so we have to reduce the drag a little bit. He's supposed to deploy the chute. Jeb. You. Right it. Control from here because I still want to stay sane while I... One by one. You can pop these little birds off. Bird gun. Fly autopilot. Deploy the uh, canard looking thing. We track landing gear. Let's just focus on one of these crow. Aim camera. Decouple. Aim camera. Decouple. Oh, is it stuck in there? Yeah, the bird is like stuck inside of the wing. You roll the um... I got a bird strike. The bird is stuck in the wing. How do I unstuck a bird? I can release the other bird. Aim the camera and fire! this floating floating point issue going on here I won't be surprised it's KSP 
Crow release. How do I switch vessels again? Did it Jeb? It didn't focus on Jeb. Now we're focused on it. We have a cloud of um bird in the sky. I'm glad the uh, KSP now has birds in it. Before there wasn't such scenery. Actually, you know what? What if we operate in ground effect mode? No, not retract the landing gears. SAS off. Deploy the Canardi Canard Canard app. Can Canard flap. Canap. Okay, let's wait for the ground effect to kick in. And then we can throttle down. Bottom core is getting very close to the water. Oh. A bird hit the water. Birds are waterproof, don't worry about it. And yeah, I'm not touching the controls right now, the thing is just in ground effect. To lower the speed. This thing does not have any brakes. What is going on with the flag there? Jeb, investigate. Ah, oh, heck. That wasn't supposed to happen. Now that thing's just gonna be going on. It's completely unpiloted. No, this does look pretty cool though. Time warp. Just try to fly at the slowest speed possible. Yeah, just over 100 meters per second and what you're getting a little bit of your time. Didn't hit the lights. Water. Aha. Uh -huh. Birds may be lighter than air, but they're heavier than water. But then lower the speed to uh, zero. Decelerate a little bit. I'm getting the water again. She should not attempt to use a crow as a lifeboat. I just realized the landing gears are kind of just floating there. But don't worry, they're auto started And there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing I can do about it. Oh no, that's a gentle water landing. Again, when you're stuck in the middle of the ocean, do not rely on a crow. That would only get you to Atlantis. Jeb. No, heck. Um, Jeb can test the effectiveness of the... Um, get ready to... Deploy or shoot, because we're testing the, um, ejection force of such the creature. Why? It's a lot less interesting as I previously thought it would be. Chip, can you store the creature in your... Where is that thing? Can't stick this on the. Maybe I can put it back. I, I don't know how to pick up the crow. Pick up the crow. We need uh, an engineer on board. You can't like. Oh, you can't pick things up. You can just offset this towards the ground, so it works like a landing gear. And inside... But... Only fit one of them. 
But you need like a certain thing to be able to connect parts together. Oh, there we go. And then we can add more birds to things. Yeah, duh. Go back to put it in the box. And then we can go use this. Oh, just weld on the crow. Store crow. Can I? Oh, I can. Oh, okay. Oh, we know. Let's just get Jeb back on here, and let's just get to the let's do the Mun challenge. Let's really have to really get back to the Mun challenge because that's what this video is about. actually just drop a few birds on the runway. Throttle up. Oh heck, that shouldn't be there. Wait. Oh, it explodes anyways. That just destroyed a crow. Crow on the runway. Be careful, they may get sucked into the engines. So while this thing is ascending, uh... The thing I wanted to mention is that the, th the thing about object-oriented programming is that if you pretend things like buttons and game objects are independent things that communicate with other things even though they're not, then you're going to have to spend a lot of effort to keep up the illusion. There's a lot of things with uh, that... Actually, a lot of programmers just don't know about memory and stuff, and like almost every scripting language out there is inefficient as heck when it gets to memory, but um, when you have a lot of things in a game, like if you have a lot of rocket engines, if you have a lot of wings and fuel tanks and stuff, what really happens is that all of these separate thingies get scattered all over the memory and then the CPU has to jump around to many different spots on the memory because it's all scattered in different areas and it's all, all about and what, what, one of the most efficient ways to represent these is to just use an array instead. So if you have uh, 1,000 rocket engines in a game, you have an array of 1,000 rocket engines. Some, maybe, maybe two arrays, maybe three arrays. Something, something. Array equals fast. And if you're using object-oriented and inheritance and polymorphism and just any game engine, Unity, Godot, whatever, you, you're not, you're not going to be able to actually optimize the game at all. At, at least in my opinion. When you have a large number of objects and stuff, just like, but you, 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 to, to be able to implement some techniques that I've been using for certain things, you require a complete paradigm shift that is no longer... that is really, really hard to do, you have to read up in my library and stuff. Or, or, or I just kind of have to get milk for information because I've barely written down many of these things. So one, one of the cool things that I've added is the implement is implementing the fully composable scenes which is uh, one probably a game engine or not, not really a game engine but the, uh, the architecture is a lot more powerful than pretty much anything else I know of so far. Like it doesn't rely on the typical objects with scripts pattern that most games feature, most game engines. Like, pretty much every game developer would code in such a way that every everything in the game is a separate object that contains a script, and that script talks to other objects and scripts, and in turn that makes that is 
that makes sense because it's well, it's a popular style that everyone learned in, but it's actually extraordinarily inefficient and it's prone to spaghetti code. So a lot of issues, well, K KSP not specific to KSP, but KSP is a really good example. But like a lot of the issues are rooted in using objects, and a lot of people fail to notice that. So in my architecture, the very all, all all the information is actually like 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 there's no like weird polymorphic type system, like there's no there's no game object, and there's no quote unquote rocket object. All the data in the scene is stored in a an in a, in a vector and in the main class not the main class there's no class main is not a class this is C++ I'm talking about. Well, main is stored uh, in the... Oh, well, main is just a file. Main is just a file. So there's no quote-unquote global variables in the application. That is like core essential global variables. It's just like all the global variables are declared in main.cpp and all of these global variables are kind of passed down into functions, into the rest of the application. And this since it's data is on a top level, it's known as the top data. And it's basically just an array of anys, like std any, but it's using a, diff a different kind of any from a library. And what this does is that every, like, struct, actually, no, I didn't even cover that part about how to represent a game in the first place. Like, for, 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 okay, again, going back to the typical Unity or Godot pattern, what people what you do in the, in, in the typical Unity and Godot pattern is when I say I want to create a rocket engine, you create a, a rocket engine object, you add a 3D, 3D mesh to it, you add physics to it, and you add a script to it that says, you know, apply thrust and do that. But there's actually more than one way that you can do this. Like, like if you think of the rocket engine, like what really is the rocket engine? It, it's just... Maybe you're going to need a number for the thrust. Maybe you're going to need another another number for the um. I don't know. It's really just a, like a thrust value, and then that has to somehow communicate with whatever is controlling the rest of the vehicle. So, say if you have like a a, a pilot capsule and a rocket engine, you're going to need like a way for the pilot capsule and the rocket engine to communicate with each other, and. The scripts, w there's actually like so many different ways that you can do this with a script that it's kind of a, kind of ridiculous that all of them are bad ideas. Like, because cause one, one thing that you can do is you can get the rocket engine to request a throttle value, request a thrust value from the... to request a thrust value from the pilot capsule. Or the other thing you can do is you can get the pilot capsule to... put the pilot capsule to write into the rocket engine. So it's like you can have one write into the other, or the other read into. So one, one, one can read the value from the other, or one can write the value into the other. And like, with like which which is the right way? What, like when it, when it, in terms of objects, it just goes like, screw you. There is, there is no, uh, there, there are actually both bad ways to do it, in my opinion. Because the, the, the best way to do such a thing is to have an intermediate value, is to have a number, is that the rocket should not actually have thrust stored in it, as in this this value, this state of, you know, thrust to throttle. That should be a separate thing, that the rocket would read from, and the pilot capsule can write to, and th that actually avoids the need for things like polymorphism, because now like, we d it, like now 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 the rocket doesn't care about what throttle value it's reading from. It can always just read that value. And if we have a way to somehow order which things are updated when, because, well, actually, because, well, in, 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 if in a typical game engine, you're, you're just given, like, an, like, an update function, and this update function is kind of, uh, it's not non-deterministic, but you don't, usually don't have much control of when this update function runs, and also a bunch of other things gets in the update function that you, you might not want it to do. Like if, like, if you have a rocket engine, it has to play sounds, it has to make particle effects, and it has to do rocket physics, and it has to do, it has to apply the thrust. And all, all of this has to be done in a single function for some reason. <coughs> and this means that certain things have to be randomly accessible as well, like, 
In one script, you're going to be modifying things in physics, you're going to be modifying sound, you're going to be modifying rendering, and this means that these resources have to be randomly accessible, which means it's impossible to multi-thread as well. So the solutions I have around that is instead of having an update function, you can just have like um, like an, like instead of going for each object in a world called the update function, you should just say you know update all the physics, update all the sounds. So like if if if, if so instead of um, having a bunch of objects that can play a sound at any time, all of your objects can have like an update sounds phase that is like so that anything that updates the sound is in one spot and you know same thing with physics same thing with you know the particle system and 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 this will improve the cache locality and everything but but really just don't use objects because like when you when you do these certain patterns which is kind of known as systems like if you heard of something called a, called entity component system the system part is what i'm trying to blabber about so now we're getting a mun encounter um And the maneuver is coming pretty close. And uh, where is the mun again? Wait, that's the mun, and this is this is not the mun. So then let's just fire fire the nuclear engines. I'll just go there. And yeah, there is some kind of graphical glitch with waterfall, but I don't really. It has something to do with the depth buffer. Something, something, something about transparency. Transparency is hard to implement. But something went wrong here. It's like it's ignoring the depth buffer completely. So some things can occlude it, but some things don't. That's really strange. I don't know how the Kerbal rendering works. What if we just drop a bird? I forgot what the quick save button is. Um, is it like F9? No, F9 is the F8. F7? F6? F5? Okay, yeah, it's F5. I was just making sure because we're going to be doing the Mun Landing Challenge after all. So we're going back to top task. So since there's no like game engine, there's no game objects in the thing. It's like when you have a, I just straight up have like you know array of rockets, array of things, array of that, and and you know array of values to pass between stuff and what. And, and that, that removes a lot of required BS that is not required anymore because it, well, it wasn't really required in the first place. Um, also, there's top. T I I don't I can't I I can't explain the session system and there was no simple explanation to this because it is very very radically different from what most game developers really know. But just saying, arrays are really fast. Like, if you just make everything in a way, you can make the fastest code ever. And like, oh, but performance isn't important. Like, oh, like, what if, you know, it's just like, like, you can care about, you can ignore performance, but then what if your competitor cares about performance? They're going to get outcompeted. As well as like, you know, I think performance is kind of like a, not, 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 not really an ethical thing, but just like, you're not the only like if you write software that's running on someone else's computer, you're not that's not going to be the only piece of software that's running on that computer. There's going to be other things running and you're going to be, you know, ho hoarding all the resources. And it it, it you it, it it's just respectful to not hold or hoard all the resources. Like, come on, it's not like everyone has like 57 cores in their computer. And also, if your code is fast, then you can just do more with it. If your code it just is more capable. How do I delete maneuvers? Oh my. It does not want to behave. Cancel. Right click and then delete this. Okay. We got ourselves a moon periapsis. Man. Should be careful with these craw, oh, craw. Alarm date. I, 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 I just keep clicking and these alarms pop up. I don't know what this does. I, I, I haven't, I haven't actually been playing this game very much in the past year or two. Okay, let's just, let's just hit those it retro. Good. No, I don't need a maneuver node here. I just want to warp here.
Let's fire the engines. We have plenty. Oh my god, the planet quad sphere. I don't like the planet quad sphere very much. You know what I did prefer? What did I. Well, actually, no, what I'm using. I'm using an icosahedron. I'm gonna use an icosahedron. I, I, I think icosahedrons are a little funnier. And if you subdivide them, they, 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 they become like. thingies. Uh. How, how did I implement the planets again? Actually, no, like, but by implementing the planets, like, just since the planet is like a, like a, like a mesh, like a vertical, not vertical, it's an array, and a planet, like, the best way to represent the mesh is an array. That's how, that's why GPUs are so fast. Well, part of why GPUs are so fast is because you don't have a bunch of objects for each vert vertex, vertice, vertex. And so, when I was trying to write the planet renderer, uh, I ended up creating a bunch of stuff that made it very easy to work with indices. Because, well, like, that makes absolutely no sense, but, like, e either way, I actually kind of turned all of these techniques into a an entire programming philosophy. And so I pretty much have, like, an entire programming philosophy that has to do with m making everything an array that originated from the planet renderer. And the planet renderer has gone through, like, numerous iterations. Like, um... The older one just had, like, a tree of triangles. And then a bunch of spaghetti to, to, ma to, ma to make sure that the triangles can share vertices from each other. Like, if you have a triangle and then you subdivide the triangle into smaller triangles, what if you have another triangle beside it? And they have to share the same vertices along the edges. And this became a, a, a very hard pain in the... I, I don't know, which is really hard, but, um... What I realized, like, 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 my, but that in the, the, the latest iteration of the planet renderer, I instead used a skeleton, t a skeleton first. So, like, I, I, like, if you take, like, subdividing a mesh can be, is actually, like, the structure of a subdivided mesh is like a rev... It's, it, it, it's, it's like a reversed kind of, kind of tree graph thingy. Where, where, like, like in CompSci, each, you have, you have a something airy tree. The, um... Oh, heck, I overshot the... When you have a something airy tree, like, you know, each each parent has multiple children, and then each of those children have, you know, more children, but in... But when you're subdividing a mesh, you have two parents that make one child. Because, you know, like, like to... to like, if you want to have a mesh and then make it more detailed. You have to take two vertices and then get a new, make, create a new vertex in the middle of those two vertices. And then you can create, you know, other vertices that's in the middle of another two pairs. So you take pairs and then you create one that's in between the two. And then that kind, that, that structure forms something I call the skeleton. So like, the, the, pla the planet has large patches, like initially, has like a, a skeleton, bare skeleton on it, and this thing called chunks gets patched onto the skeleton, and that the, the skeleton makes it so makes is arranged in such a way that you can just give it two vertices, and you can get the child, you can get the vertex between two other vertices, and this makes it really easy to share vertices from you know subdivided meshes, and yeah, that the mesh itself is like. Like, patched over the skeleton is, um, the... Ah, uh, what do you call it? I have to focus on the landing here. Yep. We have- we're running out of Delta V, so we have to be very, very careful about this landing. Um... So, about the... What do you call it? The planet chunk? The chunk it's called the chunk. Like, if you have a, a skeleton, it's just like a bear. A bare like skeleton and then the, the chunk is like a it's like a huge knitted a knitted triangle of a lot of triangles like a huge pl plane not a plane planes are rectangular it's like a lot of triangles patched onto the uh, patched over top of the skeleton so there's a lot of detail and this this makes the oh heck 
And we've 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 made it to the to the to the man. And just just retract the landing gears because F9 the quick save. No, F5 the quick cannot quick save when about to crash. Well this not well KSP is always about to crash. And let's release the payload now. Let's get off the payload. Let's see how far does the cr Just pitching up the plane. Ah, uh, uh -huh. uh, well, like, just plant the flag. But no, I don't want to use a flag. I want to use a bird. You are like, the only engineers can pick things up. Can just take a crow and put it on the. How much um, velocity can we get from this crow? We. No, we don't have. Uh, you, you don't have to. Um, you have to leave the seed, which is a crow. The jetpack has a lot of delta v. NASA should really get on this thing. Planet rendering. So and, and also yeah, you know, like like actually like so because of the techniques that I use, it's it's like I, I, I can make like the real time planet rendering thing, but then it works like it just does everything in like like a, a, a couple not not even a millisecond, like less than a millisecond to just make huge meshes for planets and stuff. And it's it's perfectly seamless as well, but actually not not yet. Like in, in in between the patches of in, in between the chunks, I have to like, like since the levels of detail can change between chunks, there's something I call a fan, or just I'll pretty much have to stitch together a low detail and a high detail edge of triangles, and this requires making a bunch of weird triangles. That's not really an issue, but um. Okay, but first let's just drop off the payload. Crawl! Let's spread crawl all over the man. Oh heck, one of them died. Yeah, a few of them died. We got one over here. Got one over here, we got one over here. We can track like the epicenter, not epicenter. What do you call the thing for? Like you have a bunch of scattered points and then you can see at the middle of all the points. You can just not average them. But it's a certain term when dealing with ejecta, dealing with ballistic, not ballistics. So uh, did you see so this launched out of, not launched into orbit. We haven't. Supposed to get one of the birds into orbit, but now we're out of them. Eh, oh well. So now we have to take off. Um, since the man is going towards the right, we have to fire engines towards the left to get back to Kerbin here. So that just means we just have to go straight up. I'm out here. It's, how do I reset the target? Um, what's the clear target thing? I, uh, I I don't remember how to play this. Squiggly? No, squiggly goes back to the target. Target. Okay, there we go. All I have to do is just go straight up and we're just gonna get oh, all the way back to Kerbin. Or straight up or more towards, slightly towards Kerbin. Where's Kerbin? Where's Kerbin? Where's Kerbin? Where's Kerbin's over there? So like, slightly this way. Like, well, this is the right direction. Go, go, going like this. Okay, yeah, that's like. <laughs> the plane is a landed state? Wait. Hold up. 
This is landed? Does it think it's landed? Can I... It's F F3. Why does it say landed? It thinks it's in a landed state and we do like epic strats and blitz glitch. Did I, did I just... I was not attempting to break the game at all. But I think we have a landed state. Hold up. The plane is landed. We can. It, it, I can glitch this into like a. Hold up, if I just if I get this up here, if I go to space center, I can't go to the space center. The game is broken. You're moving over the surface. I have to switch to a different craft, was it? No, there was something with the landed state that made it really funny. But now I, I don't have the navigational aid of orbit because it thinks it's landed. I wasn't even trying to break the game and now the game is broken. That's what I get about talking about a secret project. The game gets angry at me. Squiggly. And if I EVA. And then reboard. Does it still think it's landed? It still think it's landed! The EVA, and then go to space station. Space center. Yeah, that works! Yeah, the, the plane is just there. Moving away at like, we don't have much delta V. What's the plane doing? What was that all about? You know, we're gonna hold, um, F9. Ah, come on. We're all the way back here. So maybe we can just go for a more direct. Good enough. Let's go. Okay, I don't know the heck. This is like retrograde and burn now. This is extremely dangerous. This is dangerous maneuver. Calculate? Calculate what? No, this is not gonna work. Nope. There we go. No, this is a less vicious approach. I mean, no, we don't have enough exhaust gases to push the entire mun away. That's not what I was trying to do. Point the cockpit towards... Look at the view and then look straight up. There we go. Cool screenshot. How did the landed state happen before? Was it on... Was it on a crow? Just a couple of crow. Oh, it died. A couple another one. We're in for a rough landing. It's fine. The turn system's a little bit damaged. Missing a rapier engine or two. Either way, let's drop the payload. And let's go back. Just gonna need some assistance keeping the thing stable. Does it have any adverse? What adverse yaw or adverse adversaries? Adverse adversaries. Do a bit of adverse yaw so you can like turn down the thrust on one side to balance it out. 
Turn down this west here. No, wait, no, wait, that, that made it worse. That made it worse. Turn down this west on the other side. Turn down this west on this side. It may, it may be too vicious. Just a little bit. Just a tiny bit of thrust. I still make it back to the runway. Got one rapier engine, so it's... And we don't need engines to get back to the runway. I'm supposed to do like a, like, like a joke where it's like... You see, you see this actually has a decoupler in it? I thought it'd be funny if it just... Like, decouples and re-enters instead of landing. But I think landing with... Like, no, but it's partially destroyed craft is a little funnier. And just set Kerbin as a t not, not Kerbin. That's another untitled spacecraft. I forgot about the velocity of the Mun. So we have to, like, warp here first. Aim a little bit to the left and then... Fire the engines again. That's probably not doing what I wanted to do. I'm point not, not pointing in the right direction. Just psh, fire that way. That's what I want to do. And yeah, it's not pointing in the right direction. Let's see if I can uh, hit the um, hit the space center. Wait, oh wait, I thought that was a space center. No, this is space. The space center is over here. How long will can I like completely like, reverse the orbit a little bit like that? I don't require a thousand or so. Just fly around the, fly around the globe. Maybe we can get there with enough effort. The pl oh wait, if the engines the center of mass is not gonna be in the right spot because of this this vehicle is very stable when all the parts are in place and it's out of fuel. But I don't think that's going to be the case here. This is not high enough, is it? I thought it was 40. Point prograde. Much electric charge. We don't have much electric charge. The batteries were blown off. That was in the fairing. And then you crawl. No crawl. Returning crawlers. I kind of want to skip out of the atmosphere, but I don't know if that's possible. The space center is on the other side. Not blew up. It just explodes. Quick charge. It's safer to spin, is it? And it's a very stable craft. And it should still be very stable in the atmosphere because of the design of this plane. Thingies. Now we just have a single vape here. One minute less we can hit a hill. I don't worry, it's just a tiny bit of ground strike. Just a little bit, just touch the ground a tiny amount and not much of a problem. Visual on the runway. Okay, now that survived. Ta -da. Oh, there was still a heat shield in there. No, okay, you know what? That's it. Well, it survived. We fully recovered the uh, spacecraft. We've deployed Crow on the Mun. Did the Crow disappear? No, wait. How many Crow? Yeah, we got Crow. On the Mun. It's alive!
Oh, this is the single one that was dropped, and over here was, um, I don't know. Let's try to, like, let's drop one there. Well, that's it. Well, uh, thanks for watching the video. Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't like making these. Um, yeah, don't, don't, well, don't forget to subscribe, like, leave a comment, and, yeah, uh, Продолжение